Oh, I learn in this letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He must be very near by this. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? A few of any sort and none of name. <laughs> A victory is twice itself when the achiever brings home full numbers. <laughs> oh, I find here Don Pedro hath bestowed much honour on a young Florentine called Claudio. Much deserve on his behalf, and equally remembered by Don Pedro. He hath borne himself beyond of his promise of his age doing, in the figure of a lamb, the feats of a lion. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hath an uncle here in Messina, will be very much glad of it. <laughs> I pray you, is Signor Montanto returned from the wars, or no? No, lady, I know none of their name. There were none in the army of any sort. What is it that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Senor Benedict of Padua. Oh. oh, he's returned and as pleasant as ever he was. <laughs> but I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed for indeed I promise to eat all of his killing? <laughs> Faith, niece, you tax Senor Benedict too much. <laughs> He hath done a good service in this wars, lady, and a good soldier too, lady. And a good soldier too, a lady, but what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuff with honourable virtues. It is so, indeed, he is no less than a stuffed man, but for the stuffing, well, we are all mortal. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, you must not mistake my niece. There's a kind of merry war betwixt her and Signor Benedict. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Oh, alas, he gets nothing by it. After our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off. So now is the whole man governed with but one. <laughs> so that if he have wit enough left to keep himself warm, let him bear it for the difference between himself and his horse. For that is all the wealth that he have left to be known a Good companion. I see, lady, this gentleman is not in your books. Oh, nay, and he were, I would burn my study. But I pray, who is his companion now? Oh, he's mostly in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. Oh, he is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the, the taker runs presently mad. Oh, Lord, help the noble Claudio. If he have caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pounds ere to be cured. <laughs> I will hold friends with you, lady. Oh, do you have a good friend. You will never run mad, niece. No, not until a hot January. Oh, no, Pedro is approached. <laughs> good Signor Leonardo, you are come to meet your trouble. The fashion of the world is to avoid cost, and yet you encounter it. <laughs> <laughs> never gave trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. I think this is your daughter. Well, the mother hath many times told me so. <laughs> were you doubt, sir, that you asked her? See your Benedict. No. For then were you a child. Is <laughs> <laughs> Signor Leonardo to be her father? She would not have his head on her shoulders for all the Messina, as like him as she is. It is a wonder you are still talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. <laughs> what, my dear lady disdain? Are you yet living? <laughs> is it possible disdain should die when she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict. Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. <laughs> then is courtesy a turnkey? But it is certain. I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would I could find in my heart that I have not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. <laughs> they else would have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood I am of your humour for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. <laughs> God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman shall escape a predestined scratching face. <laughs> Scratching could not make it worse, and twere such a face as yours were. Well. You are a rare parrot teacher. Rather a bird of my tongue than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue, and so good a continuer. But keep your way, God's name. I have done. Oh, you always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Signor Benedict, Signor Claudio, 
My good friend Leonardo hath invited us all. I tell him we shall stay with him at least a month, and he heartily prays some occasion shall detain us longer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled with the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I have a few words, but I thank you. Uh, please it, Your Grace, and lead on. Your hand, Leonardo. We shall go in together. Oh. Benedict, didst thou know the daughter of Signor Leonardo? I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Do you question me? as an honest man should do, for my simple true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom as being a preferred tyrant to their sex? Huh? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, Faith, methinks she's too low for high praise, too proud for fair praise, and too little for great praise. Only this commendation can I afford her, that she were other than she is, she were unhandsome, and being no other but as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I'm in sport, I pray thee truly tell me how thou likest her. Would you buy her, that you inquire after her? <laughs> Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a kiss to put it into. But speak you this with a sad brow. In my eye, she's the sweetest lady ever I looked on. <laughs> I could see head without spectacles, <laughs> and I see no such matter. There's her cousin, and she would not possess with a fury. Exceeds her as much in beauty as the first they made of the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself. Though I had sworn the contrary, if Hero would be my wife. Oh, it's come to this. Shall I never see a bachelor free score again? Look, Don Pedro has returned to seek you. What secret held you here that you followed not to Leonardo? I would, Your Grace, would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. He's in love. <laughs> With whom? Now that is a grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With Hero, Leonardo's short daughter. Amen if you love her, for she is very well worthy. You speak this faith to me, my lord. Oh, by my trade, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and trust, my, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion. The fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise gave her most humble thanks. But that I will have a reaching, winding in my forehead, or hang my bugle in the visible boulder, and all women shall pardon me. For I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any. I will do myself the right to trust none, and defy me, for to which I may go to find her. I am the bachelor. I will see thee, ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. Well, as time shall try, in time the savage bull doth wear the yoke. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns, set them in my forehead, and let me be vilely painted, and in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire. Let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict, the married man. In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, Repair to Leonardo's, commend me to him, and tell him I shall not fail him at dinner, for he hath indeed made great preparation. Examine your conscience, and so I leave you. <laughs> hath Leonardo any son, my lord? No child but hero. She's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? <laughs> oh, my lord. When you went onward on this ended action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye, that liked, but had a rougher task in hand than to drive life into the name of love. But now I'm returned, and that war thoughts have left the places vacant. In their rooms come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair a young hero is, saying, I liked her, 
ere I went to wars. Thou shalt be like a lover presently, and tire the hero with a book of words. If thou lovest fair hero, cherish it, and I shall break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. How sweetly you do minister to love, that no loves grief by his complexion. I know we shall have some revelling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hero that I am Claudio, and to her bosom I'll unclasp my heart, and take her here in prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Thence with her father shall I break, and the conclusion is, she shall be thine. Come, let us put it presently. Sister, now, where is my cousin, your son? Hath he provided this music? He is very busy about it. A oh, brother, I can tell you strange news that you yet dread not of. Well, are they good? Oh, as the event stamps them, they have good cover, and they show well outward. The Prince and Count Claudio, walking through a thick pleached alley in mine orchard, were thus much overheard by a man of mine. The Prince discovered to Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and he meant to acknowledge it this night in dance. <laughs> and if he found a accordance, he was going to take the present time by the top and instantly break with you of it. Have the fellow any wit that told you this? Oh, he's a good sharp fellow. Send for him and question him yourself. No, no. We will keep it but as a dream until it appear itself. <sighs> but I will acquaint my daughter with all that she shall be better prepared with an answer if peradventure it proved to be true. Uh, <clears throat> don't you and tell her of it. Ah, uh, good cousin, you know what you must do. Uh, come, go with me and I will use your skill. Uh, <clears throat> have a care this busy time. sadness is without measure. But you should hear reason. And when I've heard it, what blessing brings it? I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and laugh at no man's jests. Eat when I have stomach and serve no man in his leisure. Laugh when I am merry and claw no man in his humour. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this so you may do it without controlment. You have of late stood out against your brother and he have taken you newly into his grace where it is impossible that you should take true root, but by the fair weather that you make yourself. I'd rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better befits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. In this, although I cannot be said to be an honest, flattering man, let it not be said that I am a plain dealing villain. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be as I am, and seek not to alter me. What news, Baracchio? Oh, I came yonder from a great supper. <gasps> the prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonardo, and I can give you intelligence of an intended wedding. Will this prove a model to build mischief on? What's he for a fool that betrothes himself to unquietness? <laughs> <laughs> Marry, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio. <laughs> Even he. A proper squire. And who? And who? Which way looks he? <laughs> Marry on Hero, the daughter <laughs> and heir of Leonardo. A very forward march, chick. How came you to this? Oh, well, being entertained for a perfumer, as I was smoking a musty room, comes me the prince and Claudio, hand in hand in sad conference. I... <sighs> whipped me behind the arras, and there heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, <laughs> give her to Count Claudio. <laughs> come, come. This may prove fruit for my desires. <laughs> What's he for a young upstart? 
You are both sure and will assist me? Uh, to the death, my lord. <laughs> Come, let's see what's to be done. Oh, we'll wait upon your lordship. <laughs> Was not Don John here at supper? I saw him not. How tartly that gentleman looks. I never can see him, but I'm heartburned an hour after. He is of a very melancholy disposition. <laughs> he were an excellent man that were made just in the midway between him and Signor Benedict. The one is too much like an image and says nothing. The other is too much like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. <laughs> then half of Signor Benedict's tongue in Don John's mouth and half of Don John's melancholy in Signor Benedict's face. <laughs> <laughs> With a good leg and a good foot, uncle, and money enough in his purse, such a man could win any woman in the world if he could get her goodwill. <laughs> Faith, niece, by my troth, thou shalt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. <laughs> in faith, she is too cursed. <laughs> Too cursed is more than cursed. I shall lessen God's sending in that way, for it is said, to a cursed cow God sends short horns, uh -huh. but to a cow too cursed he sends none. <laughs> well then, being too cursed, God will send you no horns. Just, if he sends me no husband, for the which blessing I am at him upon my knees every morning and evening. <laughs> Oh, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I had rather lie in the woolen. You may light upon a husband that hath no beard. What would I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman? <laughs> he that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man. And he that is more than a youth is not for me, and he that is less than a man, I am not for him. Therefore, I will even take sixpence in earnest of the bear ward and lead his apes into hell. Well then, go you into hell? No, but to the gate. And there will the devil meet me like an old cuckold with horns on his head and say, Get you to heaven, Beatrice, get you to heaven. Here is no place for you maids. So deliver I up my apes and away to St. Peter for the heavens. There we, there he shows me where the bachelors sit and we live merry as the day is long. <laughs> well, niece, I hope that you will be ruled by your father. <laughs> oh, yes. Faith, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. But for all of that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. Ah, well, niece, I hope one day to see you fitted with a husband. <clears throat> no, not until God makes man of some other metal than earth. No, oh. uncle, all none. Adam's sons are my brethren, and truly I make it a sin to match in my kindred. Well, daughter, you remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in this kind, you know your answer. Cousin, you apprehend passing shrewdly. Huh? I have a good eye, uncle. I can see a church by daylight. <laughs> oh, the revellers are entering. Uh, sister, make good room. <laughs> Lady, will you walk about with your friend? So you will walk softly, look sweetly, and say nothing. I am yours for the walk, and especially when I walk away. With me in your company? I may say so if I please. And when please it you to say so? When I like your favour. For God defend the loot should be like the case. <laughs> My visor is Philemon's roof. Within the house is Job. <laughs> Why then your visor should be thatched? <laughs> speak low if you speak love. Will you not tell me who told you so? No, just pardon me. Nor will you not tell me who you are? Not now. Oh, that I were disdainful and that I had my good wit out of the hundred merry tales. Well, this was Signor Benedict that said so. Uh, what's he? Oh, I'm sure you know him well enough. Uh, not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray, what is he? Why, he is the prince's jester, a very dull fool. Only his gift is in devising impossible slanders. None but the libertines delight in him, for he both pleases men and angers them. And then they laugh at him and beat him. 
I am sure he was in the fleet. When I know the gentleman, I shall tell him what you say. Do, do. We must follow the leaders. In every good thing. Why don't you, Signor Benedict? You know me well. I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. He is enamoured upon Hero. I pray you, dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You may do the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. Come, let us to the banquet. There's answer I in the name of Benedict, but here is ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so. The prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things save in the office in affairs of love. Therefore, all hearts in love use their own tongues. Let every eye negotiate for itself and trust no agent. Farewell, therefore, hero. Count Claudio? Yeah, the same. Come! Will you go with me, whither, even to the next willow, about your own business, county, for the prince have got your hero? <laughs> I wish him joy of her. I pray you, leave me. Oh, now you strike like the blind man. Trust the boy that stole your meat, and he'll beat the post. If it will not be, I'll leave you. Alas, poor hurt foul. Now will he creep into sedges. But that my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me, the prince is full. Ha! It may be I go under that title because I am married. Yea! But so I am apt to do myself wrong. I'm not so reputed. It is the base and bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Signor Benedict! <sighs> The Lady Beatrice hath a quarrel to you. She tells me the gentleman that danced with her told me she is much wronged by you. Oh, she abused me past the endurance of a block. She told me, not thinking I'd be myself, that I was the Prince's Jester, that I was dumber than a great fool, huddling just upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me that I stood like a man at a mark with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poniards, and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her termination, as though they were living near her, she defected an all-star. I would not marry her, though she were endowed of all that Adam had left him before he transgressed. Look, here she comes now. Will your grace command me any service to the world's end? I will go on the slightest every now to the antipodes you can devise to send you. I refer to two figure. Now, for the furthest inch of Asia, bring the length of Prester John's hood. Fetch your hair from the great Chan's beard. Do you any embassies to the big meats rather than hold free words conference with this harpy? You have no employer for me. None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, sir. It's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. <laughs> Yea, my lord, he lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it, a double heart for his single one. Mary, once before, he won it of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. You have put him down, lady. You have put him down. <laughs> So that I would not what he would do me, my lord, lest I prove the mother of fools. I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. Why, how now, Claudio? Wherefore are you sad? Not sad, my lord. How then, sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil, Count. Civil as an orange, and something of that jealous complexion. Hmm. If faith, I think you are blazing to be true, though if he is, I'll grant his conceit is false. Count Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with her father, and his good will obtained. Name the day of marriage, and 
God give you joy. Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count, tis your cue. Silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you're mine, I am yours. I give away myself for you and dote upon the exchange. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot stop his mouth with a kiss and let not him speak neither. <laughs> In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. <laughs> yes, my lord, I thank it, poor fool. It keeps on the windy side of care. My cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cousin. <laughs> Good lord, for alliance. Thus away to the world goes everyone but I, and I am sunburnt. I may sit in a corner and cry, hey ho, for a husband. <laughs> lady Beatrice. I shall get you one. <laughs> I would rather have one of your father's getting. Has your grace ne'er a brother like you? Your father gets perfect husbands if a maid can but come by them. Will you have me, my lady? <laughs> no, your grace. Uh, unless I may have another for working days of your grace is too costly to wear every day. Oh, but I beseech thee, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me, for to be merry best becomes you, for out of question you were born in a merry hour. <laughs> no, Lord, my, my mother cried, but then there was a star danced, and under that I was born. <laughs> Cousins, God give you joy! By the truth of pleasant-spirited lady. There's nothing of the melancholy element in it, my Lord. She's never sad but when she sleeps. And not ever sad then. For I've often heard my daughter say she sometimes dreams of unhappiness and wakes herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of her husband. <laughs> By no means. She mocks all her wooers out of suit. <laughs> she were an excellent wife for Benedict. Ah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> my Lord. If they were but a week married, they'd talk themselves mad. Gah. Count Claudio, when plan you to go to church? Tomorrow, my lord. Uh, not until Monday, dear son, which is hence a just seven night, and too brief a time, too, to have all things answer my mind. I grant you, Claudio, the time shall not go dully by us, for I shall, in the interim, undertake one of Hercules' labours, which is to bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection, <laughs> one with the other. I would fain have it a match, and I doubt not but to fashion it, if you three will but administer to me such assistance as I do give you direction. My lord, I am for you, though it costs me ten nights watchings. And I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero. I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good husband. <laughs> If we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory shall be ours, for we are the only love gods. <laughs> Go in with me, and I will tell you my drift. It is so. Count Claudio will marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yea, my lord. But I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be medicinal to me. I am sick in my displeasure to him. Aunt whatsoever comes athwart his affection, ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Uh, well, not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. <laughs> Show me briefly how. Well, I, I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in the favour of Margaret. The waiting gentlewoman to hero. I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out at her lady's chamber window. And what life is in that, to be the death of this marriage? Uh, well, the poison of that lies in you to temper. <laughs> Go to your, the front, your prince, your brother. 
It's better not to tell him that he had wronged his honour in marrying the renowned Claudio, whose estimation you do mightily hold up, to a contaminated stale, such a one as Hero. What proof shall I make of that? Oh, well, proof enough to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero and kill Leonardo. Well, look you for any other issue? Only to spite them. I will endeavour anything. Go then. <clears throat> Find me a meet hour to draw Don Pedro and the Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know that Hero loves me. <laughs> well, they will scarce believe this without trial. Offer them instances which shall bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window, hear me call Margaret Hero, hear Margaret term me Claudio, and bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. Grow this to what adverse issue it can, and I shall put it into action. Be cunning in the working of this, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. <laughs> Be thou constant in this accusation, and my cunning shall not shame me. I shall presently go and learn the day of the marriage. <laughs> I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviours to love, will after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become yard with his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. I have known when there was no music with him but the drum and the fife, and I had he rather hear the table and the pipe. I have known when he would have bought ten mile of foot to see a good armour, and now he lie ten nights a week, carving the fashion of a new doublet. Ha! It was what to speak plain, and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier. And now as he turned orthography, his words are very fantastical banquet, just so many strange dishes. May I be so converted and see with his eyes? I cannot tell. I think not. I will not be sworn, but love me transforming to an oyster. But I'll take my oath of it. Till he had made an oyster of me, you should never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is wise, <laughs> yet I am well. And never virtuous, yet I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise or are none. Uh, virtuous <laughs> or are never cheap in her. Fair or I never look on her. My will come not near me. Noble or not I for an angel. Of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be the colour of what please God. Ha! The Prince and Monsieur Love. I will hide me in the arbour. Come, shall we hear this music? Yeah, my good lord. How still the evening is. I shall cast on purpose to grace harmony. See you where Benedict hid himself. <laughs> Very well, my lord. The music ended, we'll fit the kit box with a penny worth. <laughs> Come, Balthazar, we'll hear that song again. Oh, good my lord. Tax not so bad a voice to slander music more than once. <laughs> Tis the very witness of excellence to put so strange a face on his own perfection. I pray you, sing and let me woo no more. Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Men will deceive us ever. One foot in sea and one on shore. To one thing constant, never. <laughs> then sigh not so, but let them go and be you blithe and bonny, converting all your sounds of woe into hey, money. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> sing no more, it is, sing no more of dumps so dull and heavy. The fraud of man was ever so, since summer first was leafy. Then sigh not so, but let them go, and be you blithe and bonny, converting all your sounds of all into hey, honey, honey. Hey, 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 hey,
song. I had an ill singer, my lord. Oh. No, no, no. Singer's well enough for a shift. If he'd been a dog that should help us, they would have hanged him. Now, come hither, Leonardo. What was it you were telling me of today? That your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? I did never think that lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she should so dote upon Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviour seemed ever to abhor. It's possible. Sits the wind in that corner? Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith, like enough. Oh, oh God, counterfeit. There was never counterfeit of passion came so close to life of passion as she discovers it. Why, what effects of passion shows she? Bait the hook well, these fish will bite. <laughs> What effects, my lord? Uh, why, uh, she will sit you. <laughs> you heard my daughter tell you how. She did indeed. Why, how, how? I would have thought her spirit were invulnerable against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had been, my lord, especially against uh, Signor Benedict. I should fit this a girl, but that a white beard for this species. Neither cannot show highness of his such reverence. She hath been the infection. Hold it up. Hath she made her affection known to Benedict? No. And swears she never will. Uh, that's her torment. For she'll be up twenty times a night, and she sits in her smock and, till she has writ a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. Oh, uh, she tore the letter into a thousand halfpence and uh, <clears throat> railed against herself that she should be so immodest to write to one who she knew would flout her. Then down upon her knee she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. She does indeed. My daughter says so. And uh, the ecstasy hath so overborne her that my daughter is sometime afeard. She will do some desperate outrage to herself. Tis most true. It were good that Benedict were to know of it by some other if Beatrice will not discover it. To what end? He would make by the sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And if he did, it were an arms to hang him. For she is an excellent, sweet lady, and out of all suspicion she is virtuous. And she's exceeding wise. Ha! In all things except in loving Benedict. I pray you, tell Benedict of it, and hear what I will say. Um, were it good, think you? Hero thinks surely she will die. For she says she will die, if he loves her not. And she will die, as she makes her love known. And she will die, if you woo her. Rather than she will make one bread her accustomed crossness. She doth well, for if she make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it. For he hath, as you know, a most contemptible spirit. He's a very proper man. He hath indeed a good outward happiness. Before God, and in my mind, very wise. He doth indeed show some sparks that are like wit. Shall we seek out Benedict and tell him of her love? Never tell him, my lord. Let her worry hard with the counsel. Nay, that's impossible. She may wear her heart out first. Well, we will hear more of it by your daughter. I love Benedict well, and wish he would but modestly examine himself to see how unworthy he is of so good a lady. <laughs> uh, will you walk, my lord? Dinner's ready. If he do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. Let the same net be spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewomen carry. Mm. Let us send for her to call him in to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this could be no trick. The
conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections are their full bent. Love me? <laughs> Why, well, it must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I would bear myself proudly if I perceived the love come from her. They say too, she rather died and showed any sign of affection. I did not think to marry. I must not seem proud. Happier day that hid their detractions and put them to mend it. They say the lady's fair. Tis the truth. I can bear the witness and virtuous to so I cannot reprove it. And wise. But for loving me. By my truth. It is no addition to her wit, nor no great argument of her folly, for I will be horribly in love with her. I may chance have some odd quirks and remnants of it broken me because I've read so long against marriage. But doth not the appetite alter? A man loves to meet in his youth he cannot endure in his age. Shall these quips and sentences and paper bullets of the brain all a man from the career of his humour? No. The world must be people. When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. Here comes Beatrice. Why does Beatrice a fair lady? I do spice the marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come in to dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure, then, in the message? Yea, so much as one may take upon a knife's point and choke a doll withal. You have no stomach, senor. Fare you well. Ha! Against my will, I'm sent to bid you come into dinner. There's a double meaning in that. I took no more pains for those fans. Then you took pains to thank me. That's as much as to say, any pains I take for you is as easy as thanks. If I do not take pity of her, I am a villain. If I do not love her, I am a dog. <laughs> I will go get her picture. <laughs> now then, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, as we do trace this up and down, our talk must only be of Benedict. <laughs> when I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him ever more than man did merit. Of this is little Cupid's crafty arrow made that only wounds by hearsay. <laughs> For now begin. For look where Beatrice, like a lapwing, runs close by the ground to hear our conference. <laughs> no, truly, Ursula. She is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as haggards of the rock. Oh, but are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my new chosen lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them, if they love Benedict, to wish him wrestle with his affection and never let Beatrice know of it. Well, why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full and fortunate a bed as ever Beatrice shall count upon? <laughs> oh, God of love! I know he does deserve as much as may be yielded to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart a prouder stuff than that of Beatrice, <laughs> disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, misprising what they look upon, and her wit values itself so highly that to her all matter else seems weak. <laughs> she cannot love, nor take no shape, nor project of affection. She is so self-endeared. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, and therefore certainly it were not good she knew his love, lest she make sport at it. Why, you speak the truth. For I never yet saw a man. How wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured. But she would spell him backwards. She would swear.
swear the gentleman should be her sister. Mm -hmm. And so tends she every man the wrong side out. Oh, sure, sure, such carping is not commendable. Oh, but who dares tell her so? If I should speak, why, she would laugh me out of myself, mock me into air, press me to death with wit. No, rather, I will go to Benedict and, and counsel him to fight against his passions. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. Ah, he is the only man of Italy always accepted, my dear Claudio. Oh, and when are you married, madam? Why, every day! She's lined, I warrant you, we have caught her, madam. <laughs> if proved so, then loving goes by haps. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. <laughs> <laughs> what fire is this in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? Contempt farewell and made in pride adieu. No glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness will incite thee to unite our loves in a holy band. For thou dost deserve, and I believe it better than reporting thee. <laughs> My lord and brother, God save you. Good den, brother. If your patience serve, I would speak a word with you. In private? If it please you. Yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? <clears throat> Means your lordship to be married tomorrow? You know he does. I know not that. When he knows what I know. If there be an impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not, yet that appear after. Aim better at me by that which I now will manifest. Why? What's the matter? I came hither to tell you, yet circumstances shorten, for she has been longer talking of. The lady is disloyal. Who, hero? Even she. Leonardo's hero, your hero, every man's hero. Disloyal? The word is too good to paint out her wickedness, yet that warrant till hell hereafter. If you will follow me tonight, you will see her chamber window entered, even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, then tomorrow wed her. But it would better suit your uh, honour to change your mind. May these be so. I will not think it. If you trust not what you see, confess not what you know. Go but with me tonight, and I will show you all. And when you have seen more and heard more, proceed accordingly. If I see anything tonight why I should not marry her tomorrow in the congregation, where I should wed, there will I shame her. And as I wooed for thee to obtain her, I will join with you to disgrace her. I shall disparage her no further. Go but with me till midnight, and let the issue show itself. For you, good men and true. Yeah, or else it will be a pity for them to suffer salvation, body and soul. At night, that were a punishment too good for them if they should have any allegiance in them. Being chosen for the prince's watch. Well, give them their charge, neighbour Darkbury. <coughs> First, who think you the most desertless man to be constable? You, Oatcake, sir, or uh, George Seacole, for they could write and read. Ooh, now come at that, neighbour Seacole. Oh, I've blessed you with a good name. Now, be a well favoured man is the gift of fortune, but to write and read comes by nature. Uh, both which, Master Constable? You have? Yeah, I knew that would be your answer. 
Well, sir, for your favour, why well, give God thanks? Now, you are thought here to be the most senseless and fit man for the constable of the watch. Therefore, bear you the lantern. Uh. This is your charge. You shall comprehend all vagrant men. You are bid any man stand in the prince's name. Uh, how if he will not stand? Uh, why then, uh, take no note of him, uh, let him alone. But presently, call the rest of the watch together, and thank God you are rid of a knave. Mm, if he will not stand when he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. Uh, true, and they are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets. For, for the watch to babble and the talk is most tolerable, and not to be endured. Uh, we shall rather sleep than talk. We know what belongs to a watch. Oh, you speak like an ancient and most quiet watchman. For I cannot see how sleeping should offend. If you meet a thief, you may suspect him by virtue of your office to be no true man. And for such kind of men, the less you meddle or mate with them, why the more is for your honesty. If we know him to be a thief, shall we not lay hands on him? Mm, truly by your office you may, but I think they that touch pitch will be defiled. The most peaceable way, if you do take a thief, <laughs> used to let him show himself what he is and steal out of your company. Yeah, steal? <laughs> You've always been called a merciful man, partner. Yeah, truly, I would not hang a dog by my will. Much mm. more a man who hath any honesty in him. Nay, by Our Lady, I cannot. Ah. Well, masters, good night. If there be any matter of waste chances, call up me. Uh, keep your friends' counsels and your own. And good night, sir. Uh, can't lay back. Well, masters, we hear our charge. Let us go sit upon the church bench till two, and then all to bed. Well, no more on this neighbours. I pray you, watch about Signor Leonardo's door. For the wedding being there tomorrow, there is a great coil tonight. Adieu. Be vigilant, I beseech you. What, oh, Conrad? Peace, stir not. Conrad, I say! Here, man, I'm at thy elbow. Oh, mass, and my elbow itched. I knew they would a scab follow. <laughs> I will owe thee an answer for that. No, I'm just with thy tail. <clears throat> now stand thee close then under this penthouse, for it drizzles rain, and I shall, like a true drunkard, utter all to thee. <laughs> Some trees and masters yet stand close. <laughs> Therefore, though I have earned a Don John, a thousand ducats. Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? Well, thou should rather ask if it were possible any villainy should be so rich. For when rich villains have need of poor ones, poor ones may make what price they will. I wonder at it. <laughs> I have tonight wooed Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman to Hero, by the name of Hero. <laughs> she leans me out at her mistress's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. Oh, uh, I tell this tale vilely. I shall first tell thee how the prince Claudio and my master, planted, placed and possessed by my master Don John, saw afar off in the orchard this amiable encounter. And they thought Margaret was here. Uh, well, two of them did, the prince and Claudio, but uh, the devil my master knew she was Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> and partly by his oaths which first possessed them. And partly by the dark night, which did deceive them, but chiefly by my villainy, which did confirm any slander that Don John had made, away when Claudio, enraged, oh, swore he would meet her, as he was appointed, the next morning at the temple, and there, before the whole congregation, shame her with what he saw overnight, and send her home again, without a husband! We charge her in the prince's name, stand! Ah, Come forth the right master constable! We have recovered the most dangerous piece of lechery that was ever known in the Commonwealth! Masters, masters! Ah, 
You'll be made to bring the form forth. I warrant ye. Masters. Never speak. We charge you to let us obey you. Oh. Go with us. We are like to prove a goodly commodity, be it made up of these men's bills. Commodity in question, I warrant you. Come, we'll obey you. Meaning, 
I meant plain holy thistle. You may think perchance that I think you were in love. Nay, by a lady, I am not such a fool to think what I list, nor I list not to think what I can, nor indeed I cannot think. If I were to think my heart out of thinking that you were in love, or that you will be in love, or that you can be in love, and yet Benedict was such another, and now as he become a man, he swore he would never marry. And yet, in despite of his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. Now you may be converted, I know not. But, methinks that you look with your eyes as other women do. What pace is this that thy tongue keeps? Oh, it's not a false gallop. Oh, madam, withdraw! <laughs> the prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you oh. to charge! Oh. Help me to dress, good cows, good men, good Ursula! <laughs> What would you with me, honest neighbour? Marry, sir, I would have some confidence with you that discerns you merely. Uh, briefly, I pray you. For you see, it is a busy time with me. Oh, marry, this it is, sir. Oh, yes, in truth it is, sir. Uh, what is it, good friends? Good man, Virgie, sir, speaks a little off the matter. <laughs> an old man, sir, and his wits are not so blunt as God help I would desire they were. <laughs> but honestly, faith, is the skin between his brows. Hmm. I am as honest as any man living. There is an old man. I'm no more honester than I. <laughs> Comparisons are odorous. Palabras, neighbour virgin. Neighbours, you are tedious. Well, it pleases your worship to say so. <laughs> now, but truly, for my own part, if I were as tedious as a king, I could find it in my heart to bestow it all of your worship, all of your tediousness on me. Ah, yeah, and twere a thousand pound more than tis. For I hear as good exclamation on your worship as of any man in the city. And though I be but a poor man, I'm glad to hear it. Hmm, and so am I. I would fain hear what you have to say. Mary, sir, I watch tonight, uh, except in your worship's presence. I've taken a couple of as arrant knaves as any in Messina. Uh, the good old man, he uh, will be talking. As I say, when the age is in, the wit is at. God oh, bless us, it is a world to see. Well said, dear faith, neighbour virgies. <laughs> well, God's a good man. And two men ride of a horse, one <laughs> must ride behind. <laughs> but an honest soul, their faith, by my troth, as any that broke bread. But God is to be worshipped, all men are not alike. <laughs> Alas, good neighbour. Indeed, neighbour, he comes too short. Of you. <laughs> oh, gifts that God gives. Oh, I must leave you. Well, one word, sir. Our watch hath indeed comprehended two auspicious persons, and we would have them examined this morning before your worship. Make the examination yourself. Hmm? What? And bring it me. For I am in great haste, as it may soon appear unto you. It shall be suffocants. Oh. Drink some wine, ere you go. <laughs> Farewell. My lord, they stay for you to give your daughter to her husband. <laughs> I will wait upon them, but I am ready. Go, good neighbour, go. Get you the George Seacole, bid him bring his pen and inkhorn to the jail. For we are now to examination, these mm. men. <laughs> and we must do it wisely. You will spare for no wit, I warrant you. It is that she'll drive some of them to my non come <laughs> And we get the learned writer to sit down our excommunication and meet me at the jail. <laughs> this lady? No. Uh, to be married to her, friar. Uh, you come to marry her. Lady, 
You come hither to be married to this count. I do. If either of you know any inward impediments why you should not be conjoined, charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any, hero? I know none, my lord. Know you any, count? I dare make his answer. Uh, no. <sighs> Stand me by fire. Father, by your leave, Will you with free and unconstrained soul give me this maid, your daughter? As freely, son, as God did give her me. And what have I to give you back whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing, unless you render her again. Sweet prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. There, Leonardo, take her back! <laughs> give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honour. Behold her like a maid, she blushes here. Oh, what authority and show of truth can cunning sin cover itself with all? Comes not that blood has modest evidence to witness simple virtue? Would you not swear, all you that see her, that she were a maid by these exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the hate of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married. Not to need my soul to an approved wanton. What? My lord, if in your own proof you have vanquished the resistance of her youth and made defeat of her virginity... No, Leonardo, I never tempted her with world too large, but as brother to his sister, showed bastard sincerity and comely love. And seemed I ever otherwise to you? Out on thee, seeming. I will ride against it. You seem to me as dying in her robe, as chaste as if the body it be blown. But you're more intemperate in your blood than Venus, or those puppet animals that rage in savage sensuality. Is my lord well that he speaks so white? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand here dishonoured that I have gone about to link my noble friend to a common stale. Are these things spoken, or do I but dream? Sir, these things are spoken, and they are true. This looks not like a nutshell. True, oh God! Leonato. Stand I here. Is this a prince? Is this a prince's brother? Is this face heroes? Our eyes, our own. Well, these things are so, my lord, but what of this? Let me but move one question to your daughter, and by that fatherly and kindly power that you have in her, bid her answer truly. I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. God defend me. How am I beset? What, what kind of catechising call you this? To make you truly answer to your name. Is it not Hero? Who could blot that name with any just reproach? Marry, that can Hero. Hero itself can blot out Hero's virtue. What man was he talk with you yesterday down at your window betwixt twelve and one? Now, if you are a maid, answer to this. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Well, then you are no maiden. Leonardo, I am sorry you must hear, but on my honour, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her, at that hour last night, talk with a ruffian at her chamber window, who hath, like a most liberal villain, confessed to the many vile encounters they shared together a thousand times in secret. Fie, fie, my lord. These things are not to be spoken, not to be, not to be heard. There is not language in... Oh, pretty lady, I am sorry for thy much misgovernment. Oh, hero, what a hero hast thou been! If half thy outward graces have been placed upon thy thought and counted of thy heart! But fare thee well, most foul, most fair! Farewell, thou pure impiety and impious purity. For thee, I look up all the... Gate of love, and on my eyelids are conjecture hung, to turn all beauty into thought of harm, and never shall it more be gracious. Has no man's dagger here a point for me? Why, how, how now, hero, wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light, smother her spirits up. Out after me. How now, cousin? Have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Oh. Yeah, wherefore should she not? 
Wherefore, why, does not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that is written in her blood? Do not live, hero. Do not open thine eyes. For did I think thou wouldst not so quickly die? Thought I thy spirits stronger than thy shames. Myself would on the reward of reproaches strike at thy life. Oh, she is fallen into a pit of ink that the wide sea hath drops too few to wash her clean again, and salt too little that would seize and give to her foul-tainted flesh. Sir, so be patient. For thy part, I am so tired in wonder, I know not what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied. Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly not. But these twelve months until last night, I have been her bedfellow. Confirmed. Confirmed. Oh, that is stronger maid, which was before barred up with lids of iron. Would the two princes lie, and Claudio lie, that so loved to the speaking of her foulness, washed it with tears? Hence, Dora, let her die. <laughs> Hear me a little. By nothing of the lady I have marked, a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face. A thousand innocent shames in angel whiteness beat away those blushes. Call me a fool. Trust not my reading, nor my observation. If this sweet lady lies not guiltless here under some biting error. Friar, it cannot be. Lady, what man is he you are accused of? They know that do accuse me. I know none. If I know more of any man alive than that which maiden modesty doth warrant, let all my sins like mercy. My father, prove you that I converse with any man at hours unmet, or that I yesternight maintained the change of words with any creature. Refuse me. Hate me, torture me to death. There is some strange misprison in the princess. Two of them have the very bent of honour. If their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it is in John the Bastard, whose spirits toil in free mobilities. I know not. If they speak but truth of her, these hands shall tear her. But if they wrong her honour, even the proudest of them shall well hear it. Pause a while, and let my counsel swear you in this case. Your daughter here, the princess left for dead. Let her secretly be kept in for a while, publish that she is dead indeed. Maintain mourning ostentation, and at your family's old monument, hang mournful epitaph, and do all rites that appertain unto a burial. What shall become of this? What will this do? Marry, this, well carried on her behalf, shall change slander to remorse, and that is some good. She dying, as it must so be maintained, upon the instant that she is accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hero. So will it we fair Claudio? when he shall hear that she died upon his words, the idea of her life shall sweetly creep onto the study of his imagination, and which he not accuse her so. And if sought not well, you may conceal her, as best befits her wounded reputation, into a reclusive and religious life, away from all eyes, tongues, minds, and injuries. Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lead me. This well-consented, present thee away, 
For to strange sores, strangely, they strain the cure. Come, lady. Die to live. This wedding day that is but prolonged, have patience and endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. But you have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wronged. Uh, how much might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but... No such friend. May a man do it. It is a man's office, but not yours. I... I could have nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? As strange as the thing I know not. I may just as easily say I love nothing so well as you, but believe me not, though I lie not. I confess nothing and I deny nothing. Oh, I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it if you love me, and I will make him eat it. It says I love not you. Will you not eat your words? In no sauce that can be devised to it. I protest I love thee. Why then? God forgive me. What offence, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I love you. Do it with all my heart. I love you with so much of my heart there is none left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> to deny it. Farewell. Oh, tell me, sweet Beatrice. I am gone, but I, I am here. There is no love in you. I, I pray, let me go. Beatrice! In faith, I will go. We will be friends first. <laughs> you dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy? Is Claudian thine enemy? Has he not been approved in the height of villain that hath slandered, scorned, mi misaligned my kinswoman? Oh, God, that I were a man! What? Bear her in hand until they come to take hands, and, and then with, with public accusation, with, with uncovered slander, with unmitigated rancor! Oh, God, that I were a man! I would eat his heart in the marketplace! Hear me, Oh, talk with a man out at a window a proper saying! Nay, but Beatrice! Oh, sweet hero! She is slandered, she is wrong, she is undone. Beatrice. Princes and counties. Oh, that I were a man for his sake, or, or that any man would be a friend for my sake. But, but manhood just slips into compliment and valor into courtesies, and men are only turned into tongues and trim ones at that. Oh, he is only valiant now as Hercules that does tell a lie and swear by it. Oh, God, I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore, I will die a woman with grieving. Tell me, good Beatrice, by this hand, I love thee. Use it for my love in some other way, then swear and buy it. Think you in your soul that can't Claudia have wronged a hero? Yea, as much as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge you. I will kiss your hand and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. And so farewell.
Is that a whole dissembly appeared? Which be the malefactors? Uh, marry that am I. <coughs> I'm my partner. But which are the offenders to be examined? Let them come before Master Constable. Oh, yeah, marry, let them come before me. <coughs> what is your name, friend? Baracchio. Pray you write down Baracchio. <laughs> and yours at the oh, Sarah? I am a gentleman and my name is Conrad. Mm, write down Master Gentleman Conrad. <laughs> Masters, it is proved already you are a little better than false knaves. And it will go thought, near to be thought so shortly. How answer you for yourselves? Well, marry, sir, we say we get none. A marvellous witty fellow, I assure you, but I will go about with him. <laughs> Come here, the syrup word in your ear. <laughs> sir, I say to you, it is thought you are false knaves. Sir, I say to you, we are none. Oh, stand aside. Oh God, they are both in a tail. Have you written down there or none? Master Constable, you go not the way to examine. Just call for the, for the watch that are to be their examiners. Oh, yay, Mary, that's the eftest way. But let the watch come forth. Masters, I charge you in the Prince's name, accuse these fellows. Uh, this man said, sir, that Don John, the Prince's brother, was a villain. Yeah, right down. Prince John, a villain. Well, why, this is flat perjury. They call a prince's brother villain. Master Constable! I pray you, fellow, peace. I oh, do not like that look, I promise you. What heard you him say else? Marry, that he did receive a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. Oh, flat burglary as ever was committed. <laughs> You're by mass, that it is. What else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean upon his words to disgrace Hero before the whole assembly and not Maria. Oh, villain! Thou shalt be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. What else? This is all. And this is more, masters, than you can deny. Prince John is this morning secretly stolen away. Hero was by this very notion accused, by the same motion refused, and out of grief of it suddenly died. Let these men be pinioned. I shall forward to Leonato's to give him my examination. Come, let them be opinioned. Let them be in hands. Let him write down Prince's officer, Coxcomb. Combined them, thou naughty violent. Away! You are an ass! You are an ass! Just so not suspect my place. Just so not suspect my years. Oh, that he were here to write me down, an ass. Ever masters, remember, I am an ass. Though it be not written down, forget not that I am an ass. Nah. Thou villain, thou art full of piety, and shall be proved on thee by good witness. I am a wise man, and which is more, an officer, and which is more, a householder, and which is more, as pretty a piece of flesh as any is in Messina, and one that knows the law to go to, and a rich fellow enough go to, and one that hath had losses, and one that hath two guns, and everything handsome about him. Come, bring them away. Oh, I have been written down an ass. Carry on thus, you will kill yourself. And tis not wisdom to second grief against yourself. I pray thee, cease thy counsel, which falls into mine ears as profitless as water in a sieve. Give not me counsel. Nor let no comforter delight mine ear, save but for one whose wrongs are suit with mine. Bring me the father that so loved this child, and whose joy of her is overwhelmed like mine, and bid him speak to me of patience. No, no. Tis every man's office to speak patience to those that ring under the load of sorrow, but no man's duty nor sufficiency to 
be so moral when he shall endure the like himself. Therefore, give me no counsel. My griefs cry louder than advertisement. Bend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. There. Thou speakest reason. Nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me Hero is belied. And Claudio shall know this, and so shall the prince, and all of them who thus dishonour her. Here comes the prince and Claudio hastily. Good den, good den. Good den. Good day to both of you. Hear you, my lords. We have some haste, Leonardo. You have some haste, my lord. Well, fare you well, my lord. Are you so hasty now? Well then, all's one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old man. If he could write himself with quarrelling, there are some of us that would lie low. Who wrongs him? Marry, thou wrongs me, thou dissembler thou. Hear thee, Claudio, to thine head. Thou hast so wronged my innocent child and me. Thy slander hath gone through and through, and she lies buried with her ancestors. Oh, in a tomb where scandal never slept, save this of hers, framed by thy villainy. My villainy? Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You speak not right, old man. My lord, my lord. Try it on his body if he dare. Away! I will not have to do with you. Canst thou thus daft me? Thou hast killed my child. If thou killest me, boy, thou shalt kill a man! Gentlemen, both! We will not wait your patience. I am sorry for your daughter's death, but on my honour, she was charged with nothing but that which was true and very full of proof, my lord. My I lord. will not hear you! No. Come away, sister. I will be heard. And shall. Or some of us will smart for it. See. See, here comes the man we went to see. Now, Signor, what news? Good day, my lord. We have been up and down to seek thee, for a high proof melancholy and would fain have it bitten away. What I use, I wit? It is in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick or angry? What courage, man? What though care kill the car thou hast meddled enough in thee to kill care? Sir, I shall meet your wit in the career. And you charge it against me? I pray you choose another subject. By this light he pales all the more. Shall I speak a word in your ear? God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. I jest not. I will make it good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. Do me right, or I will protest your cowardice. You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. But, come, when shall we set the savage bull's horns on the sensible Benedict's head? Yeah, and text underneath, here dwells Benedict the married man. <laughs> Very well, boy. You know my mind. I will leave you now to gossip like humour. You print jests. as braggarts do their bleeds, which God be thanked, hurt not. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must... Discontinue your company. Your brother, the bastard, is fled from Messina. You have among you killed the sweet and innocent lady. Uh, for my lord, lack beer dare, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with him. He is in earnest, in most profound earnest, in the war on you for the love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee. More sincerely. Softy, let me be. Pluck up my heart and be sad. Did you not say my brother is fled? Have you, sir? If justice cannot tame you, she shall ne'er weigh more reasons in her balance. But no, you'll be a cursing hypocrite once you must be looked to. 
How now? Two of my brother's men bound. Baracchio, one. Hark enough of their offence, my lord. Officers, <laughs> what offence have these men committed? Mary, sir, they have committed false report. Moreover, they have spoken untruths. Secondarily, they are slanders. Sixth, and lastly, they have belied a lady. Thirdly, they have verified unjust things. And to conclude, well, they are lying knaves. Masters, who have you thus offended that you are here bound to your answer? This learned constable is far too cunning to be understood. What's your crime? Oh, sweet prince, let me go no farther to mine answer. Do you hear me and let this count kill me? I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light. Who in the night overheard me confessing to this man how Don John, your brother, incensed me to slander the Lady Hero. How you were brought into the orchard and saw me caught Margaret in Hero's garments. How you disgraced her when you should marry her. Oh, my villainy is upon their record which I'd rather seal with my death than repeat over to my shame. Oh, the lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusation, and briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Runs this speech not like iron through your blood? I have drunk poison whilst he uttered it. But did my brother set you on to this? Yea. For the practice of it. He is composed and framed of treachery and fled upon this villainy. Sweet hero, now thy image shall appear in their assemblies they loved it first. Come, bring away the plaintiffs. By this time, the sexton will have reformed Signor Leonardo in the matter. Oh, and masters, but do not forget to specify when time and place to serve that I am an ass. Here comes the master, Signor Leonardo, and the sexton too. Where is the villain? Let me see his eyes, that when I note another man like him, I may avoid him. Which of these is he? <coughs> if you would uh, know your wronger, uh, look on me. Art thou the slave whose breath has killed my innocent child? Yea, leave an eye alone. No, not so, villain. Thou beliest thyself. For here stand a pair of honourable men, a third is fled, that had a hand in it. I thank thee, princes, for my daughter's death. Record it with your high and worthy deeds. It was bravely done, if you bethink you of it. I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself. Impose with what penance your invention can lay upon my sin. Yet seem thy not but in mistaken. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live, that were impossible. But I pray you both, tomorrow morning come you to my house. And though you cannot be my son-in-law, yet be my nephew. My sister hath a daughter, almost a copy of my child that's dead. Give her the right you should have given her cousin, and so dies my revenge. Oh, noble sir, your other kindness doth bring tears from me. I do embrace your offer, and dispose for henceforth of poor Claudio. Tomorrow then I shall expect your coming. Tonight I'll take my leave. This naughty man shall face to face be brought with Margaret, who I believe was packed in all this wrong. No, by my soul, she was not. I knew not what she did when she spoke to me, but always hath been just and virtuous in anything that I do know by her. Moreover, sir, <coughs> which is indeed not under white and black, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me ass. I pray you, let it be remembered in his punishment. I thank thee for thy care and honest pains. Oh, the worship speaks like a most thankful and reverend youth, and I praise God for you. Here's for thy pains. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Don't save the foundation. <laughs> Go, I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. 
Well, I'll leave it there and pay for your worship. Which I beseech your worship to correct for the example of others. Yeah. Yeah. God bless your worship. I wish your worship well. God restore you to health. I humbly give you leave to depart. And if a merry meeting may be wished, God prohibit it. Come on over. <laughs> Farewell, my lords. We look for you tomorrow. We will not fail you. Tonight I'll mourn with hero. Bring you these fellows on. We will speak with Margaret. Our acquaintance grew with this nude fellow. So forcible is thy wit. But I must tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I will shortly hear from him, or I will subscribe him a coward. I pray thee now, tell me, for which of my bad parts didst thou first fall in love with me? Well, for all of them together, for they maintain so politic a state of evil, they will not admit a single good part to intermingle with them. But I pray, which of my good parts did you first suffer love from me? Suffer love? Ha! A good epithet. I do suffer love indeed, for I love thee against my will. Oh, in spite of your heart, I think. Poor heart. If you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours, for I will never love that which my friend hates. <laughs> Thou and I are too wise to woo. It appears not in this confession. There is not one wise man among twenty who would praise himself. An old, old instance, Beatrice, that lived in the line of good neighbours. If a man do not in this age erect his own tomb where he dies, he shall live no longer in monument than the bell rings and the widow weeps. And how long is that, think you? Question, an hour in clamour, and a quarter in room. Therefore, it is most expedient for the wise, if Don Werner's conscience find no impediment to the contrary, to be the trumpeter of his own virtues, as I am to myself, so much for praising myself, who I myself will bear witness is most praiseworthy. And now tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill too. Serve God, love me, and mend. Uh, there will I leave you too, or here comes one in here. <laughs> Madam, you must come to your uncle's, yonder's old coil at home. It's been proved that my lady Hero has been falsely accused, Prince and Claudio mightily abused, ah. and Don John is the author of all who is fled and gone. Will you come presently? Will you go hear this news, Signor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thy eyes. And moreover, I will go with thee to thy uncles. <laughs> This is a monument of Leonardo. It is, my lord. <sighs> Don't 
done to death by slanderous tongues was the hero that here lies. Death, in guerdon of her wrongs, gives a fame that never dies. So the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Hung thou there upon the tomb, praising her when I am done. Now music, sound, and say your solemn hymn. Pardon, goddess of the night, those that slew thy virgin night, for the witch in songs of woe, round about her tomb they go. Midnight, assist our moan, help us to sigh and groan, heavily, heavily. Graves, yawn and yield your death, till death be uttered, heavily, heavily. Now unto thy bones, good night, yearly will I do this right. Come. Let us hence, and then to Leonato's where we go. And Hymen now with luckier issues feet, and this for whom we rendered up this wool. Did I not tell you that she was innocent? So are the Prince and Claudio who accused her upon this error you heard debated. But Margaret was in some fault in all of this, although against her will, as it shall appear, in the true course of all the question. <laughs> well, I am glad that things sort themselves so well. <laughs> and so am I, being else than forced by faith to call you and Claudio to a reckoning for it. <laughs> well, daughter, and gentlewomen all, withdraw you to a chamber by yourselves, and when I sent for you, Come hither masked. The Prince and Claudio promised by this hour to visit me. My sister, you know your office. Mm -hmm. You must be mother to your brother's daughter and give her to young Claudio. And I will with confirmed countenance. Mm -hmm. Friar, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, Signor? To bind me or undo me, uh, one of them. Signor Leonardo, truth it is, good Signor. Your niece regards me with an eye of favour. <laughs> that I, my daughter, lent it is most true. And I do with an eye of love requite her. <laughs> the sight whereof I think you had from me, <laughs> from the Prince and Claudio. Uh, but uh, what's your will? So your answer is enigmatical. <laughs> but for my will, my will is your good will, may stand with ours to this day, to be conjoined in this honourable state of marriage in which good friar. I should desire your help. <laughs> my heart is with your liking. And my help. Oh, here comes the Prince and Claudio. Mm -hmm. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Uh, good, good morrow, morrow. Prince. Uh, good morrow, Claudio. We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry with my sister's daughter? Hold my mind where she is having her. Fetch your fourth sister. Here's the friar ready. <laughs> How now, Benedict? Why hold you such a February face, so full of frost and storm and cloudiness? I think he thinks upon the savage bull. <laughs> Hush! Fear not, men. We'll tip thy horns with gold, and all Europa shall rejoice at thee, <laughs> as once Europa did at last in Jove, when he would play the noble beast in love. <laughs> <laughs> Bull Jove, sir, had an amiable love, and some such strange bull leaped your father's cap, and got a calf in that same noble feet. Much like to you, for you have just his bleed. <laughs> for this I owe you. Here comes other reckonings. Which is the lady I must sit upon? The same is she, and I do give you her. Why, then she's mine. Sweet. Let me see your face. Uh, no, uh, that you shall not, until you have taken her hand before this friar and sworn to marry her. Lady, give me your hand. Before this holy friar, I am your husband, if you lie with me. When I lived, I was your other wife. <clears throat> and when you loved, 
You were my other husband. Another hero? <laughs> Nothing, sir, no. <laughs> Oh. One hero died defiant, but I lived, and surely as I live, I am a mate. The former hero, hero that is dead. She died, my lord, but whilst her slander lived. <laughs> and all this amazement can I qualify, when after the holy rites are ended, I will largely tell you a fair hero's death. Meantime, let wonder seem familiar, and to the chapel let us presently. <laughs> Soft and fair friar, which is Beatrice? I answer to that name. What is your will? Do not you love me? Why, no, no more than reason. <laughs> your cousin and the prince of Claudia would deceive, they swore you did. Do not you love me? Truth, no. <laughs> No more than reason. Why, why then my cousin Margaret and Ursula are much to see, for they did swear you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. Well, they swore you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. <laughs> then you do not love me. Well, no, no more than friendly recompense. Oh, come, cousin, I, I'm sure you love the gentleman. And thou be sworn upon that he loves her. For here's a paper written in his hand, a holding sonnet of his own pure brain, fashioned to be a <laughs> And here is another, written in my cousin's hand, containing her affectionate divinity! <laughs> a miracle! Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee. But by this light, I take thee for pity. <laughs> well, I would not deny you, but on this good day I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. <laughs> oh, <laughs> peace! <laughs> I will stop your... Woohoo! <laughs> How fare you, Benedict, the married man! <laughs> I tell thee what, Prince, a college of wit practice could have flagged me out of my humour. Does I think I care for satire and epigram? No. The man will be beat with brains. I shall have nothing handsome about him. In brief, since I do purpose to marry, I will think nothing to any purpose that the world may say against him, and therefore never flout at me, though what I have said against it, for man is a giddy thing, and this is my conclusion. For thy part, Claudio, I did think to have beaten thee, but in that heart thou art like to be my kinsman, live unbruised and love my cousin. <laughs> and I have well hoped thou wouldst have denied Beatrice, that they might have cuddled thee out of thy single life and make thee a double dealer, which out of question thou wilt be if my cousin did not look exceedingly narrowly to thee. <laughs> come, come, we are friends. Let's have a dance so we're married, that we may lighten our own hearts and our wives his. <laughs> Sir, we'll have dancing afterwards. Uh, first of my word, therefore, play music. Prince, thou art sad. Get to your wife, you <laughs> will not. There's no start more reverent than one tip with horn. My lord, your brother John has been taken in flight with our man back to Messina. <laughs> Think not on him to tomorrow. I will devise thee brave punishments for him. Strike up pipers! <laughs> <laughs>